The first bony point we're going to find today is the anterior superior iliac spine, which is this piece of bone here, which is on the front of the ilium. It's a fairly easy bony point to find because it juts out through the skin. Um, so this is the actual anterior superior iliac spine. Just for interest, there is also an anterior inferior iliac spine, which is too deeply buried to palpate. Callie's a very good model for the ASIS, and she can put her hands on her own anterior superior iliac spine for us. Okay, so this is the anterior superior iliac spine. The next bony point uh, we're going to find is the iliac crest, which is shown in purple here. And we'll show you on Kelly in a few seconds how to find it. But if you start at the anterior superior iliac spine and work your way around, the ilium has a crest shape going along the pelvis and actually ending at the back in the posterior superior iliac spine. Going backwards from the ASIS, we have the iliac crest, which we can trace out in an arc going posteriorly towards the posterior superior iliac spine. It's probably easier to palpate it when the model's lying down and the abdominal muscles are relaxed because if Cali tenses her abdominals, it becomes a bit more indistinct. It's not quite so easy to find. And if she relaxes again, we can palpate the margins much more successfully. The other bony prominence which is quite easy to feel is the posterior superior iliac spine which is a continuation of the iliac crest posteriorly and in some people you can actually see that's where the dimples are. A continuation of the iliac crest posteriorly ends in the dimples which we can just see here. This is the posterior superior iliac spine or the PSIS. The final bony point around the pelvis that we can palpate is called the ischial tuberosity and it's the bony prominence that we sit on where the hamstrings attach and it's this long thick ridge of bone here. To find the ischial tuberosity is obviously quite a delicate area so we need to be careful. If you want to find your own ischial tuberosity the easiest way to do it is to sit on your hand and you can feel the bony prominences under your fingers but obviously we can't do that with a patient. So the easiest position to put the patient in to find their ischial tuberosity is to lie the patient down with the hip and the knee flexed to approximately a right angle and then we can palpate the ischial tuberosity here. One of the largest bony prominences at the proximal end of the femur that we can palpate is called the greater trochanter and it's this lump of bone here where the powerful gluteal muscles attach. We're now onto the greater trochanter, which is a bony point on the femur itself. Although it's a large bony prominence, it's surprisingly difficult to find because it doesn't poke through the skin like the anterior superior iliac spine does. So I've tried to show it here with this purple piece of material. If you put your hands in your pockets, the point where your hands are is roughly the greater trochanter. And as I say, it's surprisingly difficult to find because it's a large prominence here with big muscle attachments. One of the ways that you can make sure that you're on it is to rotate the femur internally or externally and if the bony point moves then you're on the femur. Again on the medial aspect of the knee we have uh, a large condyle called the medial femoral condyle condyle is the whole of this round shape here. And on the end of the condyle, we have an epicondyle, this small protuberance here. Working our way down the medial side of the knee, we can find the medial femoral condyle, which is the large rounded end of the femur. To get to it, we actually come off a little ridge of bone here called the adductor tubercle. You have to dig in quite hard to find it and it might be a little bit uncomfortable for the model but that is the adductor tubercle and then we have the femoral condyle and the most prominent part of the femoral condyle is the femoral epicondyle where the medial ligament of the knee inserts on its way down to the tibia.
On the lateral aspect of the knee, we have a lateral femoral condyle, which refers to the whole knuckle. And we have an epicondyle, which is the outside aspect of the femoral condyle. On the lateral side of the leg, we also have a lateral femoral condyle, which we can trace the margins of here. And again, the most prominent part of the lateral femoral condyle is the epicondyle, where the lateral ligament attaches on its way down to the head of the fibula. On the lateral aspect of the knee, and further down than most students appreciate, is the head of the fibula, which is this. On the anterior of the knee joint, we have the patella or kneecap, which is the shape of an inverted teardrop. The patella is a fairly easy bony point to find. It's shaped like an inverted teardrop, and we can see the margins of it here. We've got the patella tendon inferiorly, and the quadriceps bulk going into the patella. If Cali tightens her quadriceps muscle, we can see that the patella actually moves, and the patella will no longer move because it's actually a sesamoid bone which is embedded inside the quadriceps muscle. The next bony point we can find is the actual line of the knee joint, and this is the gap between the inferior end of the femur and the superior aspect of the tibia, and we can see in this red light here where the knee joint lies. We can't trace it anteriorly because the patella gets in the way. We can actually feel the joint line of the knee. We can feel where the femur ends and the tibia starts, and we can feel a small depression here. We can trace it round on the medial side and the lateral side, but we can't see it at the front because the patella is in the way. But this is the line of the knee joint. And to double check, we can ask Kelly to straighten and bend her knee, and we can feel the actual joint moving. Okay, and down. On this slide we can see the position of the tibial tuberosity, which is also called a tibial tubercle. It's on the anterior portion of the tibia, and it's a relatively easy bony point to find, and it's where the quadriceps muscles insert via the ligamentum patelli or the patella tendon. We can also palpate the anterior medial border of the tibia. There aren't any muscles covering this part of the bone, so it's very subcutaneous, which is why it hurts so much when we bang it. But we can actually feel the border of the tibia, and it's quite common to feel small depressions and grooves where people have walked into tables or banged their shins in the past. So we can feel the anterior border of the tibia here. Moving our way down to the ankle, on the lateral aspect of the ankle, we can feel this bump here, which is the end of the fibula, and it's called a lateral malleolus, and three lateral ligaments attached to this bone. If we work our way down the lateral aspect of the leg, down the shaft of the fibula, it ends in a large bony prominence here called the lateral malleolus, and three ligaments attached to this, the lateral collateral ligaments of the ankle. We have the anterior talofibular ligament, the posterior talofibular ligament and the calcaneofibular ligament. On the medial aspect of the ankle, at the bottom of the tibia, we have a similar bump called a medial malleolus, and this is where the medial collateral ligament or the deltoid ligament attaches. If we work our way down the inside aspect of the tibia, it ends in a large bony prominence here called a medial malleolus. And this is where the deltoid ligament attaches, or the medial collateral ligament, as it's also known. On the medial aspect of the foot, we have another bony prominence which we can feel, which is called the tuberosity of navicular. We're now into the tarsal bones of the foot, and one of the tarsal bones that we can feel is called a navicular. And in particular, we can feel the tuberosity of navicular. So if we come down on the medial side of the ankle, we can feel quite a large bump here, and we can trace out the margins of the navicular. And again, further distally and inferiorly to the cuboid, we have this bump, which is called the tubercle at the base of the fifth metatarsal. And that's where one of the perinei muscles attaches. If we find the fifth metatarsal, which is on the side of the little toe, 
and trace it proximally, it ends about halfway down the length of the foot in a bump. That bump is called a tuberosity at the base of the fifth metatarsal, and that's where one of the perinei muscles attaches. Inferior and anterior to the lateral malleolus, we have a bone called the cuboid, which is this bone here. That's the location of the cuboid bone, which is a square bone here, which is one of the tarsal bones. Just to end with, we've got a coloured picture of the dorsum of the foot. What you're looking at here is the right foot seen from above with the tibia and the fibula removed. The bone which is closest to you would be the talus, which is shown in yellow. And the word talus is written across the articular part, which articulates with the ankle. Underneath that, in pink, we have the calcaneus. So the boundary between pink and yellow is the subtalar joint. In pale blue we have the navicular, which we showed you how to palpate earlier. Anterior to that in pink we have the cuneiform bones. And below the navicular in pale green we've got the cuboid bone, which we